saw recently that uh, Joe Biden made a statement about how they want to have 50% of this nation, only 50% being white, and um, how that there's just too many white people and we need to eliminate this number and we're going to just open the borders up and just flood this country with illegal immigrants and um, get rid of the white people. So there's a second thing in that black box, an unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. And, uh, you know, I get a little bit sick and tired of that racism against white people because racism is a, is a philosophy of idiots. And it uh, makes me mad. It really does. And, um, but the question comes up, are white men evil, horrible, racist, terrible murderers, mass murderers, and whatever else? Well, uh, there were white men that have done evil things, certainly. But you see, that's where racism fails, because racism just classifies everybody. If there's, if we can find some evil white men, then they all must be evil. If we can find uh, Asians that are certain ways, then all Asians are bad. If we can find black people that are violent or something, then all black people are violent. That's why racism is stupid. Um, to say that because Adolf Hitler and guys like that were white, then that proves that white people are capable of great evil and we should eliminate their numbers and make them be ashamed of who they are and ashamed of their culture and whatever else. White people had slaves in America, so we should hate all white people. Well, that's a very foolish thing. You see, um, there's also a lot of good things that white people did. And you have to understand that and appreciate that. If it wasn't for white men, uh, you wouldn't have the Bible. The Jews, they're making handwritten copies. But it was the white man that came up with the Gutenberg Press and the white man that uh, translated it and made it available to the common man. Uh, so there's, yes, there are evil white men, but there are also extremely righteous white men. And um, a lot of the founding fathers of this nation, well, all of them were white men and gave people freedom in this nation. Oh, but there were whites that did bad things to the native people, the indigenous people. Yes, and there were whites that got along with the indigenous people. So, uh, it amazes me how easily manipulated some people's minds are. And they will say that we fight racism. We're radically opposed to racism, meaning whites that hate black people or whites that hate indigenous people or whatever else. And yet they themselves become racist in hating all white people. And putting all white people down and saying that all white people you know there's just too many whites out there and we should eliminate their numbers stupid absolute absolutely stupid makes me angry but uh what's really behind it because i need to continue to bring this stuff out because i'm seeing this propaganda it's called divide and conquer if you haven't seen my videos before you have to understand that that's why joe biden is saying these things Joe Biden is on the same wrestling, he works for the same wrestling agency that uh, Donald Trump works for. That wrestling agency is called uh, Vatican Professional Wrestling or whatever else. These guys are all on the same team. They might seem like they're different, but uh, they all are either, either educated by the Jesuit order or given awards and things by the Jesuit order. Check it out, you'll see that I'm right. Um, Biden didn't go to a Jesuit school, but he's received different awards from the Jesuits. Donald Trump went to Fordham. He sent his son, the one son I think went to Georgetown. I think another one went to Fordham. So these people, they're papists, which makes them globalist. If you're Roman Catholic, your allegiance is not to your country. Your allegiance is to the Vatican, to the church, first and foremost. That's where your allegiance is to. And the Vatican has used this tactic down through the centuries where they will ship in immigrants. Uh, remember the Christian nativist movement here in America where Protestants, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants like myself, 
we were very much opposed to the Vatican sending in all these people from Ireland, all the Roman Catholics from Ireland, and um, other nations as well. And we tried to fight against it, and we warned what would happen. But the Catholics came in, and they brought with them the Mafia, and organized crime, and uh, gave us men like Al Capone, and Richard Kuklinski, evil white men, you know. And, uh, but we still had a pretty good, pretty good uh, country for a long time because we had um, men like Peter Cartwright, men like uh, D.L. Moody, Dwight Lyman Moody, men like uh, J. Wilbur Chapman, and a lot of the other guys, the old great preachers of the 1800s. Uh, so we balanced it out. You know, you get into the 1900s and you had uh, some of the great preachers of the 1900s and uh, great movements of the Lord because they had the King James Bible, the Bible of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant movement. You say, well, that sounds so racist because you're saying what you are. Look around. Racism, it's white snow. How dare I say that it's white? I should say it's snow of no collar or something. <laughs> uh, you know, if you, if you can't differentiate between things, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Break that thing off, it's sticking out into the trail. Um, but you see, this has been an age old tactic uh, that they, yeah, it's, it cracks me up. We're going to end racism. Racism is, is dying and whatever, we'll, we'll stop racism. No, they won't, no, they won't. Racism is the favorite, one of the favorite tactics of the liberal news media. They love it, it's never going to end. You'll never have a time on earth when there will be a time when all the races will get along and everything else. That's nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. I remember a guy I used to know. His father worked at a big factory down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And he said that the break room was naturally segregated. And nobody was told to sit with their own people. But uh, the different workers, they all sat with their own, you know, kindred or whatever you want to call it. Their own ethnicity. They did it on their own. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You should want to be around people that are like you, that have your own culture. I mean, I grew up with German children, played with German children in my neighborhood. Echternach, Feaster, Hess, um, Bomberger. Um, oh, I can't think of the one guy's name. Fisher, you know, German children. And we had a great time playing together. You know, and we didn't hate black people. Uh, my grandparents, I remember, uh, they would say names that are today considered hate speech and whatever else, referring to black people or to Spanish people or whatever else. They didn't hate anybody. It's just what was said, you know? Uh, I remember we were down in Washington, D.C. the one time when I was a little boy and there was a, we, uh, my father took a wrong turn. We got into this neighborhood. It was mostly blacks and, uh, I remember these kids, these black kids, they were playing on the, running up over cars and everything. And they said, they stopped, they said, hey, look, look, whiteies pointing at us. You know, look at the whiteies. <laughs> we laughed. We didn't go, oh, we're the victim of a hate crime. <laughs> oh, you know, I can't believe that they would call us white. <laughs> we are white. You know, you go and you buy some kind of thing, you do a background check for a gun or whatever, you know, or some other type of thing, driver's license, whatever. It says, what's your race? That's racism. No, it's common sense. And as Christians, we have to fight against this system. We have to fight against it and say, no, you're not going to make me feel ashamed for who I am. I am a child of the living God. Yes, that's true. I'm, uh, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus in, in, as far as eternity. But there's, you know, it goes on, that passage goes on to talk about the difference between male and female. There are differences between male and female. And there are differences between our cultures. That's the way it should be. We need to have segregation. We need to have separation and respect one another. As I've said so many times, if I go to Africa, I want to see African people and African culture. I don't want to see them acting like white people. So bizarre. But understand, it's a military tactic. That's what racism is all about. And, you know, this... 
satanic stuff that's going on with bringing in all these immigrants. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, they're already talking about it. They're already, dis already discussing it. Now things could change. There could be different plans that would go this way or that way or whatever. But I believe what's going to happen is uh, a lot of these people are just going to be rounded up and uh, deported. Maybe even put in camps. Um, I mean, it already happened here in America back in World War II. They put Japanese Americans in camps. They caused Germans to change their name. Uh, pretty sure my name, my last name, my real last name is Denklinger. D-E-N-K-L-I-N-G-E-R. And they changed it to Denlinger. So it would sound less German, less offensive. And um, a lot of Germans that were here in America, they spoke German as a kind of a second language or their primary language in English as a second language. And uh, oh boy, not during World War II because if you speak German, that means you're a Nazi. See how in an effort to control racism, you actually become racist. It's like the thing with hate crime. In an effort to uh, speak against hate crimes, you become a hate criminal yourself. You have to call people that disagree with your lifestyle uh, homophobic, saying that we're afraid of uh, a perversion that we don't appreciate. That's hate crime. Oh no, it's not, you know. And I've been charged with hate crime on YouTube, by the way, because I say what the Bible says. You know, so you can persecute me and my Christian beliefs and say I'm guilty of a hate crime when you yourself are committing one against me. You know, you know the best thing to do for this nation? Just forget all the stupid little whiny little things. That, oh, you can't say this and you can't say that. Just let people have free speech. You know, some guy's being a jerk, some guy's being an idiot or whatever else. And uh, calling you names that are derogatory, whatever, just say, whatever. Walk away from him. Walk away, go away. You know, uh, if you're a Christian, somebody says something derogatory to you, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. They're supposed to cast out your name as evil and attack you and whatever else. So, uh, we have to be a aggressive, fighting people. I, uh, I don't like pacifism. I understand the, the point of being a pacifist where you say I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ and I'm not going to take up the sword or whatever else. I get it. But you know what? It often leads to the mindset then. A lot of the Mennonites where I was born and raised down in Pennsylvania, they don't even preach the gospel anymore because it's too militant. You know, they don't want to upset anybody. So, you know, these Mennonite missionaries will go to another country and they just they just preach uh, world peace and pacifism and whatever else. Disgusting. Uh, it's not supposed to be that way. And I, for one, I just I want to explain myself so people do not misunderstand me. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what race, ethnicity you are. Love you. Okay. I've met some fine black people down through the years. One of the, the greatest preachers I ever heard was from Africa. Wonderful, dignified man, you know, and again, you know, racism, all black people are stupid or something. This guy was brilliant, all right? That's why I'm, I hate racism. I hate the whole concept of it. And that's why it ticks me off when people call me a racist. <laughs> it's insanity. But the guy was such a great preacher. I'll never forget his sermon about the Gaza Road. He had that neat African accent and everything else, you know. Where is your Gaza Road? <laughs> never forget that. Big tall guy, real dark, you know, and everything, and just very polite. Thank you very much, and thank, and just, man. And the Lord just used that guy to just convict me. You need to be in ministry, Brian. And this black preacher here, he's uh, being used to me to put you down, white man. <laughs> and met another one from Africa, and I met American, you know, blacks too, and things. And uh, love you. I love you to death. But you know what? I'm not going to be ashamed to talk about my white ancestry because that angers me. You know, my ancestors had no part in uh, taking Indians' land from them. We bought our land. 
Uh, <laughs> they were Mennonites. They were Anabaptists. We didn't come and steal land from anybody. Um, we worked hard. We learned from the native people. I still like to learn from the native people, foraging and things like that. I have a number of books in my uh, library that are Native American um, remedies and, and herbal guides and things like that. I love to learn from them. I've met some, you know, some of the uh, Wabanaki people and whatever else. I, you know, talk to some of the elders from the Penobscot Nation and things. I, I love people of other kindreds. I really do. But uh, I get really irritated about this whole thing of how I'm just supposed to be so ashamed of myself. And if I say something like, you know, it was white men that gave you the King James Bible. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. That's, it's a fact. It's the way it is. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a white man. Okay? I'm a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I'm not a Catholic. You know, I can't change the fact that I'm a white Anglo-Saxon. I could change the fact that I'm a Protestant if I lost my mind, but uh, I'm not. I'm not going to be that way. I'm not going to bow myself to some dirty pope and go kiss his toe or something. I don't think so. Um, so, you know, unfortunately it's going to go to war. It's going to, they're going to use this thing and people are too hot-headed to, to think their way through this and say, wait a second here. Um, you know what? Let's not be divided like this. Uh, yeah, there are real, you know, enemies, communists and liberals and things like that that want to just destroy this nation, tear down the traditional family and whatever else. But um, don't let racism get in and clog your mind and, and make you start to hate people just because they're of a different ethnicity. Um, segregate, separate, certainly. Out of respect, I'm not going to force my cultural ways on you. Um, don't force yours on mine, on me, excuse me. Um, that's fine, but uh, just be really careful because I can see this stuff building and all it's going to take is some kind of a, another George Floyd or some other, you know, thing that the media is going to do to control the masses, mass formation psychosis or whatever they call it. And it's going to be this big event happens and oh, now we have to hate each other and and the shooting will get started and whatever else. And the immigrants, I mean, man, you're coming into this country illegally. That's a bad idea, right? That's a very bad idea. And I mean, there, you look at the, some of the conservative talking heads and whatever, and they're already talking about deporting. Sorry, the snows, you know, occasionally you hit, it's kind of a packed trail here, but then occasionally you hit a soft spot and you go whoop down it. So, sorry about that. Um, but they're already talking about it. We're going to round them up and deport them. You know, and I'd like to make another little interesting point here before I close this video. Um, we're not far from the northern border, Canadian-American border. You know, we drive right near it and everything a lot of times. So it's not that many miles, you know, uh, to the east that way. Um, <clears throat> I don't see lots of immigrants coming across the northern border. Huh, I wonder why. Could it be the uh, white stuff here? The uh, cold? I think so. So, just uh, wanted to put that out there. If you're white, don't let this mind control stuff get to you where you start to think to yourself, well, I can't say that the white people gave you this and the white people did this great thing and that thing. I have to be ashamed of, of being white and I can't say I'm German and I'm British, I'm Scottish, ancestry, whatever. I, I shouldn't do that because that might make some poor black person feel bad. Well, or, you know, Asian or whatever. You know, usually the, the, the real big anger, the division thing is between whites and blacks, as you well know, if you know anything about American history. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, we can't feel bad for people. If people are thin-skinned, then let them be thin-skinned. Um, there are a lot of stupid, wicked people out there. You can't think about that stuff. Um, God in eternity has the kings of the different nations coming and bringing things before the throne. God preserves the nations. God is all about national sovereignty. And um, that's what this whole globalist movement's about. So uh, 
my prediction, anything could happen at this point in time, but I think what's going to happen is they're going to be putting Trump in uh, here in 2024. He will be selected because he's a charismatic actor and he knows the right things to say. He'll follow his script very well. He already is. I mean, he's already acting like he's president, you know, calling for this and calling for that, <laughs> like he's got the authority of a president. Um, but uh, the people, the white people of this nation have been pushed around for a very long time and uh, the anger is there. And it's just going to take that right little drop of media-induced violence and kaboom. Um, but as a Christian, you say, I'm not going to be part of that. Good, don't. But uh, at the same time, don't give up who you are. And, um, you know, we have to do things in this world, brethren, in this life. It's not about picking the lesser of two evils or whatever else. We have to do things to try to maintain a level of peace. A level where we can say, okay, you know what? Um, I want to be able to continue to preach the gospel. And so I'm going to do what I can to preserve the First Amendment to the Constitution. I'm going to do what I can to preserve liberty. Um, and not just say, well, you know, it doesn't matter. We're going to be leaving soon. And so just let the whole world, you know, fall apart. Uh, watch out for that stuff. Stand up for your God-given rights, brethren. And stand up for who God made you to be. Alright? See you in the next video.